Well, good evening, my friends, and happy Good Friday. Uh, a lot of people always say, well, why do you say happy Good Friday? You know, that seems like a bit of an oxymoron, but um, to be honest, um, you know, today the devil looks like he has won, uh, and we as Christians know that actually he loses, uh, and he loses big time, and so that's why uh, I always say happy Good Friday. I'm glad, though, that you are uh, joining us uh, tonight, and by joining us, I lost my Indian friends, um, and uh, this is the second time now that I've lost Father Joseph, and um, so again, I'm, I'm feeling like a bad pastor, but um, uh, I think what happened was uh, last night after the uh, Holy Thursday service, you know, we had a very powerful uh, adoration time out in the back parking lot of St. Joe's Church, and so I brought Jesus out, and uh, uh, and, and of course it was it was chilly. It was very cold, and Father Joseph, uh, very much still used to the India India weather, uh, was not a happy camper about how cold it was. And we got back into the sacristy, and he had his chasuble up over his ears, and he was all very very. It was just chilly, and he was shaking. And and I said, Father Joseph, I said the people are out there waiting for you to lead the rosary. And he just kind of looked at me like, oh. And then, of course, he saw the look on my face that I was joking with him. The good news is he's starting to understand uh, just how much I uh, joke with him, and uh, he's uh, starting to, to, to get that. He hasn't started to give it back yet, but I'm sure that's going to happen. So, nonetheless, uh, we are here together, and uh, I'm happy to join you on this uh, Good Friday as we reflect on this whole week and all this craziness. So, let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. And loving God. We are so grateful for the gift of your son, Jesus, who came onto this earth to die on a cross, but then in three days to rise again. We thank you for saving us from our sins and giving us hope in the midst of these crazy times. These things we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, you know, today I was thinking about some of my uh, St. Jerome friends for a couple of reasons. Uh, today would have been the last fish fry. They always had a fish fry on Good Friday. And so right about now, we would have been concluding. And uh, so there was no fish fry, and I'm really missing the church fish fries. So I had to do the next best thing today and went to McDonald's. I don't know how many of you have had the McDonald's filet o fish but those go down easy. Those go down very easy, and so uh, I uh, had my McDonald's filet o fish for my one meal uh, for the day. Hopefully, you guys remember to uh, fast and also to abstain from meat. Uh, and so, anyway, I had that. I was also thinking about some of my St. Jerome friends because they recognized and know that I cannot cook. And so um, a group of them who have started this wonderful kind of ministry and, and this meal thing, uh, they actually brought me over a wonderful meal with a customized wine glass. Now look at this. Cooking with clerics. I don't know if you can like, if that's the right way or not, because this phone always like, you know, inverts things, but cooking with clerics. Isn't that wonderful? Uh-oh, Pat Vertelbeck has been to McDonald's before. She knows that it's two for five for those uh, wonderful filet o fish. I won't tell, tell you, if you if I got two or not, but you might be able to guess. But anyway, cooking with cleric. So I'm grateful to Melissa and Carmen and uh, all my St. Jerome friends who thought of me and brought me food and this uh, wine glass. And so very, very nice of you guys. So I was thinking about, I've been thinking about priesthood a lot this week because obviously last night, the institution of the priesthood and and then the chrism mass and all that type of stuff. And I was talking with my spiritual director, who I'm living with right now, Father George Wenzinger, and he had such an awesome point on priesthood. We were talking, I told him I'd give him credit, but he said this, you know, he said, we talk about all these, you know, various essential people, and we're arguing who's essential now and who's not essential and all that type of stuff. Um, and so, and he goes, you know, he goes, he goes, I've just come to realize, and, and so have I, how essential our priests are. Um, I look back on my own story and my own history, uh, and if I didn't have priests in my life, well, I 
wouldn't be where I'm at this day. You know, I'm going to end tonight with a, a little um, a homilette from my uh, uncle, Father Tony Borgia, uh, who passed away about 15 months ago. And uh, he, it was a homily he gave on Good Friday. And again, I think, the, I think of uh, how he impacted me and all these various priests throughout my time have impacted me and again have allowed me then to be a priest and then to bring Jesus to all of you. You know, that, that was so powerful last night. We had a parking lot full of people who just yearned to see and experience Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. It was, it was powerful. It brought a tear to my eye. And Father George was talking about how essential priests are. In that, you know, what do we do? Jesus says, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body. Do this in memory of me. And we are called to truly, truly, truly uh, bring Jesus to people, you know? Um, and that's what us priests are called to do, and, and that's what I tried to do last night, and, and it, was, it was absolutely powerful. And again, just made me thankful for the gift of priesthood, but also made me reflect on uh, these days. Not a lot of parents uh, encourage their kids, or grandparents don't encourage their grandkids to be priests, but um, the reality is, in a world where, you know, people kind of want to put Jesus aside, well, we're reminded today that we can't ever put him aside. And now more than ever, we got to have Jesus. We got to have Jesus. And so, again, I've just been so grateful this week for the gift of priesthood. And in the midst of the craziness and the, just the, the, the all sorts of stuff going on, the ability to pray. I just got back from the church praying Stations of the Cross and the uh, kind of the dark, empty church. Uh, as, and I looked up and I saw, you know, the tabernacle empty, which symbolizes that Christ is dead right now. Um, how powerful that is to think about his sacrifice. I love the liturgy today. If you haven't gotten to watch uh, any of the uh, Good Friday liturgies, it is so simple and stark and yet one of the most profound as we get to reverence and venerate the cross. And you guys had to do that from uh, a distance today, but man, I mean, it, it was just powerful as I genuflected in front of the cross and kissed it. I mean, uh, I didn't. Anyway, I don't even know. I, yeah, I don't even know what to say about that. Um, just to think, though, and I hope all of us think about the fact that Jesus died for you, 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 Heather Gerber, who is watching, you, even you, Grant Greiser, you, you are the ones that Jesus Christ died for, died for me as well. And sometimes we don't really change our ways in order to honor that, and so. As we think about all of the stuff that's going on, I just think about uh, the fact that I just, people have been saying this, when are we going to get back to normal, Father, you know? And of course, God only knows. But I don't think we're ever going to go back to normal. And one woman kind of looked at me like, oh no, we're not going to get back to normal? Good and heavenly Lord, what are we going to do? And I said, but I don't know if we want to get back to normal. Now, if you mean normal as in being able to get together, and you mean normal as in being able to go to church, and all of that type of stuff, I mean, yeah. But to go back to what was normal, which oftentimes equated to bad habits or bad practices or things that took us away from Jesus Christ, I don't want to go back to normal. I've had time to pray, my friends. I've... My prayer life is the best it's been in a long time. I don't want to go back to normal where it was just one thing after the next and busy, busy, and busy, and oh, crazy, and all this. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, I don't want that. But I think, my dear friends, we have to be prepared for a change. As Jesus came into this world and died on the cross, things changed for good. As he rose from the dead, man, talk about change. And how often do we just kind of like to keep stuck in our ways and we don't want to change this has forced us to change and in many ways that's good now granted some ways have been very painful and again i think about the people who uh, have died of the coronavirus and and their loved ones who haven't been able to be there with them or can't celebrate a funeral as they usually would obviously obviously i'm not talking that that is a good thing but in the fact that this has kind of snapped us out of ourselves you know, talking to people, talk to one person today and, you know, just talking about how, like, uh, again, like, 
this was the cause of, of him really kind of um, being able to, to, to really open himself up to the Lord. How awesome that is. You know, how awesome that is. But again, we're people of habit, and we just want to kind of stick in our ways. I was kind of laughing today because we had to, uh, obviously we had to cancel First Communion and Confirmation, and we had to reschedule those, you know. And because of rescheduling, I mean, it's it's crazy looking at the calendar, and you don't know when you can reschedule or when you should reschedule or, you, did, you know, and all this type of stuff. And uh, looking at what's already scheduled for the church and all these different things, and so we had to reschedule First Communion for Tuesday nights, two Tuesday nights. We thought, well, we'll do, you know, different weeks if, in case families have vacations. And again, I found out, you know, some people are not thrilled about that because we always do it on Sunday. Darn it. We've always done it that way. But I've come to realize the way that we like to control things and have it go the way that we've always had it go and how we like it and how we're comfortable with it, that's, that got shot out of the water about a month ago, didn't it? That got shot out of the water. And now... I think this is the painful realization for all of us who maybe are a bit uh, control freaks. Not that that would ever be me. But that we're not in control. And Christ is. Uh, and so doing things the normal way, the way we've always done it, it's not going to happen. And so we've got to go on this wild ride with our Lord. And be ready for the fact that he's going to open up new doors and windows and all sorts of things in order to help us on our way. And uh, I'm just... I'm mindful of that these days, and uh, I'm grateful uh, for the new ways that he has opened up for me uh, to grow closer to him. And I pray that he's doing that for you, too. I really do. And I pray that, you know, those things that maybe we're complaining about these days, you know, maybe we maybe we need to turn that, turn that around, or maybe we need to just stop that because it's not helpful, you know. Like, again, if you're one of those ones who's always on Facebook or social media complaining about... Uh, you know, Governor DeWine or President Trump, or you love him or you hate him or you, oh, what good is that doing anybody, my friends? Let's focus on Christ right now because we can't control those situations. And so love him or hate him, it is what it is. And we got to keep on moving forward. And our Facebook rants do nothing but just kind of divide and bring people further into a funk. We don't need to be further in a funk, you know? And so, again, all these things are just things that go on in, in this head, and it's a scary place to be, I'll just tell you that. But they're just the things that I've been thinking about. I just hope, though, that um, over these next few days, uh, especially tomorrow, when there's that kind of eerie silence where we know that Christ is in the tomb, that we can fill that silence uh, not with a bunch of other, like, you know, distractions, but that we can fill uh, our hearts with with. Jesus Christ, um, with his sacred heart that uh, wants to um, wants to be in our heart and fill us in that way. Um, as we conclude tonight, I just want to, uh, uh, again, offer this little reflection that my Uncle Tony uh, offered um, uh, before his death. And uh, uh, again, he, um, he always had a way with words. Interesting enough, this contained no swear words, which those of you who know him, uh, typically it would have contained. Um, but he was pretty good with homilies. He didn't do that. Not often. Uh, and so, again, I think this is um, a good reflection on Good Friday. They condemned Christ to death and made him carry his cross. That was Friday. But Sunday was coming. They stripped Christ of his garments, spit on him, beat him, mocked him. That was Friday, but Sunday was coming. They crucified him, and he died on the cross. That was Friday, but Sunday was coming. They laid him in a tomb. That was Friday, but Sunday was coming. Neither the cross nor the tomb could hold Christ. We have good Fridays in our life. Loss of job, broken relationships, obviously now sickness, the death of a loved one. But these good Fridays make way for our Sundays and our hope. My dear friends, Sunday is right around the corner. And so our Lord continues to pour out hope upon us. And um, 
just grateful for that. And so, again, know that I am praying daily for you uh, in the midst of these uh, interesting times that we live. And uh, again, I can't wait um, to have uh, everybody back. I was talking to somebody uh, today who was uh, in, privately praying in church, and uh, she came up uh, to me, of course, properly social distanced, and she said, Father, when we get back, I think we're going to need some tissues in our church. She goes, because there's going to be a lot of tears flowing. And what I can tell you and promise you is that those will be tears of joy. They will be tears of joy. And the sad tears that we shed now always give way to the tears of joy. And so, my dear friends, God bless. Uh, know that I love you. Know that God loves you. Uh, and let's relish in that this evening. Take care. And we'll uh, have a happy Easter, okay? Take care. God bless.